This is going to be about the playful watercolor brush set. So this is your invitation to try something even if you've never done it before. There's so many things that I had zero idea how to do. I had never done it before, but I just tried. And when it didn't work, then I just kept trying to figure out ways to do it. Just make things even if you think you don't know what you're doing. And that's the beauty of art is that Yes, there are some rules with art, but a lot of it is just be creative, have fun, experiment, try new things. You can just try to recreate what you see and have fun with it. And if it turns out to not be exact, that's okay. And really that's even more than okay because then you get to experiment and and think of new things, bring new things into the world that have never existed before. So I have two texture papers in here. Now I don't use this one a ton. I just kind of added it in if you wanted to like add a little bit. Um, so it looks like this. And then when you're using a paper texture over top of something, you would turn it to multiply and that helps it to show the texture there and I'll show you in a second, but I'm first going to kind of turn this down a little bit and you can use do that through opacity. So I'm going to just put a brush down below so that you can see kind of what I'm talking about. So just, I'm not gonna do anything fancy. I'm just gonna kind of put it underneath. So you can see the texture. Now this one is kind of, I don't know, I used it as something that's going to be in combination with this one. But really, I don't use this one a ton. I do use the watercolor paper texture a lot. And so I'll just show you. You make sure to never lift your Apple Pencil when you put the texture down and it won't overlap over itself. We're gonna do the same thing. We'll turn the layer with the paper texture to multiply. And you can see now, I'll show you how it goes back. So normal, it, it kind of looks like the watercolor brush is a layer below it. But when you turn it to multiply, it looks like it's on the same layer. And then we would turn the opacity down. You could do it that way, or you could press this little magic wand, hit hue, saturation, brightness, and then you could pull the brightness and make it a little less dark. This is something you can play with a ton. Lots of people will do like layers. They'll do different colored layers of the watercolor paper texture. And then they'll um, just kind of turn that down. And so you can play around with that, but I honestly, I just use gray and it turns out really good for me. So that's how you use these two brushes now the textured watercolor script. I just made this brush to look as though it's being used on a watercolor paper. So there's going to be parts of the paper that are bumpier and they'll kind of move that ink a little bit and they'll cause the edges to kind of be pushed out a little bit. So I just created it to have a little bit more texture so it looked a little bit more realistic. Now the texture, the texture script is just really meant for modern calligraphy, but you can use it for literally anything that you wanted to, um, anything that can go thin or thick. But what I made it for was for, for modern calligraphy. I'm gonna show you the flower anthers, um, or it just could be small dots if you wanna use them. So I'll show you in here how this flower looks and it's just to recreate quickly those flower anthers. Now, if you wanna know what a flower anther is, they are these right here. And so when you're looking at them from overhead, they look like little dots. So these would be two examples of flowers that have a lot of those anthers. And so that would be what we're trying to recreate. So for the light wash, I have light wash just a single color and then I have it as a dual color. Now these brushes seem pretty similar but they're actually a little bit different so I'm going to show you that. But first I want to just show you some watercolor art so you can kind of see why I created some of the brushes that I did. So you can see in here 
just the different variations within the color. So if we zoom in a little bit right here, you can just see how very light this color is. There's not a lot of dried edge, whereas something like this has a much darker edge to it. And so like for instance right here, you can see this really, really dark edge. You can see this really dark edge right here, but this one doesn't have a really dark edge. And so the light wash is made so that we can duplicate this effect where it's just this really light color, no dark edges, no dried edges. It's just this really light color on the page. And then when we get into the, the watercolor main brush, that's where we're gonna start being able to create these um, much darker edges when you use the brush. And then when we get further into like the leaves and the petals, that brush is just going to allow you to more easily create this effect with one stroke. Just so you can see the comparison. So this is light pressure. This is a lot of pressure. And then for the water watercolor main, this is light pressure. So it's got much more pigment in it. And then this is the, uh, oops, sorry. And then this is a lot of pressure. So you can see that much darker edge to kind of replicate that dried look. And this one does not. So this is the light wash. And this is the watercolor main. And then I'll show you as well, and I'm just doing the solid color. And then this is the watercolor leaves and petals. And so I'll just, I'll change this to a green. So it just allows you to create leaves really easily because it goes thin to thick depending on the pressure you put on your brush. Whereas the watercolor main and the light wash, they're not pressure sensitive, so they don't change size with pressure. So this flower I used the light wash on just to be able to create this really um, light petal. And obviously I'm not gonna be able to match the color perfectly. So it just creates this really pretty, very washed out watercolor. And then same with the bee wings, that was also done, but it was done with the light wash dual. This is the dual, and so this is what I used for the bee wings. Now, it doesn't look like I did anything by changing the brush, but I'm using a white mixed in so that there's more variation in the color. Whereas if I was just to do the light wash and use this color, this is no pressure, and this is a lot of pressure. And it, I just, I liked being able to bring in more white. And so I would prefer to use the dual for this rather than a single color. But the dual brush does come in handy when you do have two colors, because then it allows you to create flowers or petals that have more than one color. So you could use a little bit of the yellow and then a little bit of the pink and so it just, it looks really nice to be able to use two colors at the same time. Now the watercolor main is what I used for most of these flowers because I wanted them to have this really dried edge. But for the flowers, I tend to use the dual color, uh, the watercolor main or the main watercolor brush. I tend to use the dual more because I really love mixing the colors. So I would pick a bit of a yellow to go with this. So two different brushes and then obviously the leaves. The watercolor small has a much smoother appearance, but again, 
If you do light pressure, there's not as much saturation. And if you do a lot um, more pressure, then there is much more saturation to it. Now, that is for kind of a smoother stem if you want that. But then this one is the brush that I would probably use more often than not, which is the, the rough line, because I really want it to make it look like the watercolor and the, uh, the color has been affected by the texture of the paper. So when the paper is raised up, it kind of pushes the water color a little bit to the side. And so I feel like this gives a much more realistic look. And so the brushes would be the same for dual color. If you wanted to maybe add in a bit of yellow or just to kind of give it a bit of variation. And then same with this. It just brings in some of that color. So I would use these brushes for petals, or not petals, for the stems, just being able to create a thin line without having to adjust the size of my brush so much. Now the inky outline might seem similar to the rough line, but it's actually much different. So the inky outline is actually used to create looks like this where they draw the line a little bit off of the actual art. So I'll show you with a black color. This would be the inky outline. This is the rough line and this is the the watercolor small. So this is much more saturated. It's a much darker whereas this one has a lot more water added into it so it's a much more diluted brush. A watercolor fill and blend can be used two different ways. So you can use it as just a blending brush or you can use it to create the effect that you've added in a ton of color over top of your painting. So if you've ever watched somebody do watercolor, sometimes what they'll do is they'll start off with their color and they'll do like some little, I need to be even smaller than that. They'll do like these little pools of color. Now I have to kind of draw a little bit, but if you imagine they'll um, create the watercolor flower like this. And so this will just be basically a little puddle of water with color inside of it. And then what they'll do is they'll take their very diluted brush and they'll kind of dip into it and it'll it'll bleed that color out. Now I'm I'm showing you what it would look like in real life. So it's not going to create the same effect, but it'll make sense in a second. So they would pull the color out and it'd be very diluted like this. So their brush would be very, very diluted. And so what I wanted to be able to do was sometimes when they do this pull, it can make the water kind of spread out really fast and all of a sudden you see these kind of lines. And so I wanted to be able to have a brush that you could put over top to kind of mimic that. And so let me make this brush a little bit smaller. So it sometimes creates this almost like cloud looking color inside the way that the water would spread. Like this right here. And so I really, really loved that. Now I don't love how intense that is. So we'll kind of turn it down, but honestly, it would be kind of cool if we changed the color of it a little bit like that. Maybe pull this a bit more diluted. So that's why I made this brush, but then you could also use it as like a blending brush if you wanted to kind of blend this a little bit, blend the edges, 
make it look a little bit more diluted without pulling any more color into it. A stain is just to create the look of a stain on your, on your background. So it would just be to recreate something like this, just like the splashes that draw, that dry on your paper, just something to add to your background if you wanted. So it obviously wouldn't go with this, pic I mean, it could if you really wanted to, but it would just be to recreate those little stain spots on your paper. Now the watercolor flicks, these, this one, the watercolor paint flicks, this one is just to create, and I should get a better color. It's just to create like individual little flicks on the paper. Whereas this one that's the paint splatter, it's much more condensed together. And I'll show you an example of, of something I've made with these. And then the faded paint splatter is to create um, paint splatter that is a lot more like dried um, the paint didn't it wasn't as saturated so that's why I created those brushes and I'll show you in this one so this is something I made with the playful watercolor set you can see that this is the uh, paint splatter brush right here and then the paint water the watercolor paint flicks you can see are here just kind of more individual and then the faded paint splatter you can see right here and I use them in here as well so you can see these are the paint splatter now these next brushes are the background brushes so there's the, the rough round the smooth round and the square brush you can see that I used that in the background of this B art and then one thing to keep in mind that when you're using the paper texture, always make sure that it's above your art and keep the art below in a separate layer. So just to show you what they look like, this is the rough round. This is the smooth round. And this is the square brush. And it's gonna look different depending on how you hold your brush. So like if you used it like this, it kind of turns on its side, but I created it to be used more kind of up and down and it will layer on itself. So it's just to kind of be used as a, as a background, something to add in. So these are just some examples of the things that I've made with the watercolor, the playful watercolor brush set. So I made this with that brush set. I made this with the brush set. I made these with the brush set, but um, I actually also included in here in some of these kind of brighter spots my glamorous watercolor. So that's something different, but um, just to create a little bit of the glitter um, or shininess, not necessarily glitter because I blended it out. And then I also created these. I did have a saying in here, but I was using it for something else, so I deleted it. But So that's um, some of the things that you can make, and that's how to use the brushes in the playful watercolor brush set.